All right, well, welcome. In this video, we're going to look at how to factor a polynomial using what's called the Xbox method. So let's go ahead and get started, and let's look at one, one specific example. We'll look at 4x squared minus 9x minus 9. So if you want to follow along with me, write this down on your sheet, 4x squared minus 9x minus 9. Now, the reason why we call this the Xbox method is because you're going to use an X and a box. So go ahead and create those two visuals. And what I like to do is I like to start with the box because this is where some people make mistakes. And we're going to put the very first term in the top left corner and the constant in the bottom right corner. And our goal is to figure out what's in the diagonals. And then that's going to help us get this in factored form. So now the a value is 4. So this is one of those where we cannot use a shortcut method. We have to use this process. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to multiply those first and last terms together and put that in the top part of the x. So 4x squared times negative 9 is negative 36x squared. Then we have that middle term, that negative 9x. We're going to put that in the bottom of our x. And now our goal is to figure out what two values multiply together to be negative 36x squared, the same two values that add up to be a negative 9x. Now sometimes it's hard to think about all those uh, possibilities. And so let's just think about what's going on here. If we multiply two numbers and get a negative answer, that means one of the numbers has to be negative. And if we add them together and get a negative answer, well, that means the bigger number has to be negative. And so what I would encourage you to do, if you have a hard time trying to figure out what two numbers multiply together to be negative 36x squared that add together to be negative 9x, come up with a list of all the factors of 36. So like 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6 would be all of those factors. And then like we said, the bigger number is going to be negative. And since we're dealing with variables here, we would include x's for both of those terms. And so now as you look down that list, which one of those pairs, which one of those pairs of factors add together to be negative 9? And hopefully you're seeing that the one in the middle here, 3x times negative 12x is negative 36x squared, and 3x plus negative 12x is negative 9x. So what we're going to do is we're going to put those two values. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. You could put them here in the x. But ultimately, we want to make sure that we put them over here in the box. And again, it doesn't matter where you put them in those diagonals. You could have the negative 12x and the 3x where I put them, or you could swap them. Your answer in the long run will end up being the same. All right, so now we're at the final step because our goal is to get this in factored form. So I'm going to look at that top row there, and I'm going to look for what's the greatest common factor between those ter two terms. And so I notice they both have an x, so I'm going to have to factor an x out, and 4 goes into both of those, so my greatest common factor would be 4x. Now we're going to look at that bottom row. In that bottom row, do the same thing. Now the first term has an x, but the second term doesn't, and so we're not going to have a variable, but I see that they're both divisible by 3. So that would be a positive 3. Now we're ready for our first column there. So looking down at that first column, the greatest common factor between those two would be just an x, because between the 4 and 3, the GCF would just be 1. So if you want to put 1x, otherwise it would just be x. Now here's where it gets a little tricky using this Xbox method, is the signage, the S-I-G-N, the sign of each term. So if, the, if we're looking at it from left to right, like if that 3x in the bottom left corner had been a negative 3x, if we look at it from left to the right, if the very first thing we see is negative, then what comes out is going to have to be a negative. Or when we look at it from the top down, if the very first thing we see at the top is a negative, then we need to factor out a negative. And so in this term, it doesn't matter that the 9 is negative, but the fact that that 12 is negative means that I'm going to have to put a negative outside of here. And then looking at 12 and 9, the GCF would be 3. So it would be a negative 3 that would go outside of here. And I would always double check and make sure that uh, the outside factors multiply together to be the inside. So 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So I can verify that, yes, we've done everything right so far. So that means that what's on the outside is our factors. So our answer here would be 4x plus 3 times x minus 3. That would be the factored form of that original polynomial. So before we end here, um, I just want to remind you that the one thing to remember when using this method is you always want to look to see, before we start factoring things out, the sign of either the top row, so the, where the 4x squared and negative 12x is, or the first column, the 4x squared and the 3x, that's going to determine the sign of the greatest common factor. So again, if this 3 had been a negative, then we'd put a minus 3 out here. 
or because this minus 12x or because this 12x is negative is why we have a negative out here. So this term in the bottom right corner doesn't determine the sign on the outside. It's when we look at this top row in this first column, those pieces are what determine the signs of the greatest common factor. So that's the one thing to remember when using this method, but otherwise that is how you factor using the Xbox method.